Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're going to be discussing 5G and the coronavirus and we're going to be talking about both the pros and the cons. That's right, both sides of the argument is going to be discussed right here, right now. Let you guys know what the hell is going on. So first, let's talk about the pros. I'm starting with the pros right now. And you got to see this, this is pretty damn impressive. So over in China, in the Hubei province, you know, where Wuhan, where it all started, they are building hospitals powered by 5G. 5G network infrastructure to run robots controlled by humans. As you know, with viruses, they are spread via close contact to humans who have the virus, viral load, we'll get into that very soon, but right now, these medical practitioners can protect themselves with robots and they can be controlled by 5G. Of course, of course, of course, there are other technical solutions to get this. You could use Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff, but you gotta understand, money is to be made with 5G. So if you can get a nice business case like solving the human contact issue for medical practitioners with 5G, it's gonna make money and if you're making money, you're gonna get more money to pump into R&D and innovation. Whereas if you go down the traditional route of Wi-Fi, you know, wh where's the money gonna be made? You know, it's all about renting out the cell towers, the cell networks, all that kind of stuff, money's gonna be made there. And of course, cost-wise, infrastructure-wise, if, if you had to dig up the roads, the underground to wire, wire the ground with the cabling, very expensive. Whereas over the air, it's potentially a lot faster and it's cheaper to build up the infrastructure. So there you have it there, pros for 5G and solving the coronavirus problem. And other pros I gotta say is, I'm very confident about what's going on. At the beginning, I was like, what the hell is going on? These guys need to close down their borders and get this under control. But right now, I mean, they've even canceled WrestleMania, amazing. So I'm very con confident that the governments have got this under control. And let's look at the case with flu and coronavirus, you can see right now in China, okay? Coronavirus, the new cases, they've pretty much flatlined. It's not like shooting up to the sky. The new cases have flatlined at around the 100 level. Okay, you can go up with all the theories, maybe they're lying and all that stuff. I don't care about that, but right now they're saying it's 100 and the death toll, the daily new deaths over in China is going down. So they've pretty much peaked and it's going down. Of course, we might go up again, risks, all that stuff, but I'm pretty much sure that they are over the worst of it over in China. And they are around four months ahead of everyone else in the world. So in about four months time, everyone else should be the same. And let's look at America, for example, and let's look at the flu. Let's compare it with the flu. So during flu season, America gets around 22,000 deaths in that three month period. And you gotta understand that flu has a vaccine. The vaccine is around 50% effective. So potentially the flu, it can be 44,000 in that flu season. And just cross-referencing cross that data with how now China have got it handled and it's on the way down. Pretty sure that it's not a super virus. It's not gonna kill everyone. Pretty much most people, it's gonna make you feel groggy. Some people that have other underlying conditions, yes, it is a very dangerous disease for you, just like any other disease like the flu and all that stuff. But as you can see, there is a big discrepancy with how the media is reporting the flu and how the media reports the coronavirus. And uh, to be honest with you, just don't get yourself too anxious about it. Like for example, a couple of months ago, the media was saying that the whole of Australia is on fire, global warming, the end of the world is here. I looked outside my window, I live in Australia, Gold Coast, no fires in sight. Of course, there were areas of Australia, bushfires, it happens, these kids, they light up the forest, they're crazy people. Yes, there was fires, but it's not all over Australia like the media was reporting. I gotta say, maybe there's a lot of hype being pumped into this, but know that there's something called viral load. Viral load is how viruses get you. So, for example, if you have minimal exposure, minimal contact with this virus, it's gonna double every single day, but you're starting off at one, it's gonna go to two, four, six, eight, twelve, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred twenty-eight. 16, 32, 64, I know my, my bit numbers, but basically, it's gonna grow a lot slower, giving your immune system more time to fight it off and kill it off. Whereas if you expose yourself to a lot of viral load, it's gonna start off at 1,024, 2,048, 4,096, and onwards 8,090. I'm probably getting the maths wrong, but you get the idea, it's gonna double at a far more extreme rate. 
giving your body less time to react and that's where you can get in trouble. So the fact that they've closed down WrestleMania sporting events, limited you know, events to less than 100 people, all that kind of stuff, locking down some countries, it is a good thing. So most people's viral loads are gonna be low and they'll be able to fight it off naturally. And I say things are definitely on the positive and hopefully as a human race, we're gonna get over this and realize that the media are such gas inflators and just don't get sick worrying about it. Yes, wash your hands, seriously. Get rid of all that crap on your hands. Wash yourself, convert to Islam if you want. You have to wash your hands and face and all that stuff five times a day. Don't do that, I'm just joking. You know, don't convert because you're scared of a virus. Don't do that, just do some soul searching if you want to convert religion and stuff. But basically, just wash yourself and minimize your contact with other people, especially if they sneeze. I always leg it, I play like living Tetris in real life. I'm in Surface Paradise where it's pretty much virus cities because we have imports everywhere, but pretty much, yeah, just, just, you know, take care of yourself, don't hype yourself up, don't get yourself in a panic, stop buying up toilet paper. Like, worst case, what's gonna happen? You're pretty much just gonna take a shower. Yeah, you don't need toilet paper, what is wrong with you guys? Forget about that. Now, let's talk about the negatives, kinda went in there on the positives, positives it looks good, and positives that it seems like we can use 5G to help some medical practitioners out. Now, the negatives. There's been a lot of stories, conspiracy theories saying that there's no such thing as the coronavirus that is actually 5G causing this damage to people. And I gotta say like uh, looking around the world, pretty much most countries in the world have a 5G rollout. And uh, yeah, most co countries are affected by 5G, but I have found a couple, for example, Indonesia, it says that they don't have a 5G rollout until 2022 and they are suffering right now from coronavirus. Very, very minimal cases, of course, nothing like the, the big, big hotspots, which is good, but it kind of like kills that story because how could it be a 5G issue if they don't have 5G in that country? So it must be a virus and just seeing how it's spreading pretty much looks like a virus. On the other negatives, I guess, the only other one that's interesting, I guess, Wuhan is 5G capital of China, actually around six months, six months before they reported the first case, they did open up their 5G showcase streetlights. Yeah, they, they rolled out the new 5G over there and it was super 5G demonstration. Now, the thing about coronavirus, it lives in bats. And we do know, we do know from scientific research, research that 3G, you know, with enough exposure can cause cancer in lab rights with enough exposure. 5G, a bit more pervasive, it could have maybe excited the virus, causing it to jump to humans. I mean, they've been eating bats over there for the last, well, how many years? It's a tradition over there, it's a delicacy, they love that stuff. So why would the virus jump now? We don't know, maybe the radiation caused some sort of virus to jump, maybe, we don't know. Needs research, needs scientific research. I wouldn't jump to that conclusion today, but that's the only angle I can see that maybe it caused something. That's what I can see right now. But overall, I'd say, yeah, don't hoard, wash your hands, take care, wear if you're ill, don't see your local GP or doctor, go to a testing suit. And also, if you're not ill, don't go to a testing suit because you know what's gonna happen in a queue. There's gonna be people that think that they're ill in that queue. So you're probably gonna get some of that viral load from them. So just, you know, quarantine yourself if you're worried about it and order online. If you're worried about it, wait it out. If you need to go to the toilet and you don't have toilet paper, take a shower and let's ride this amazing, you know, joining of the world. It's kind of, kind of really nice seeing the world just join together. I mean, at the beginning, I know a lot of people were hating on Trump for closing the borders and all that kind of stuff, but it looks like the whole world's copying, copying that and just doing the right thing, closing down and taking care. So I hope you found this video useful. Yes, I'm not, I'm actually, I'm actually saying 5G is pretty cool in this scenario. Potentially needs a bit of research regarding how it affects viruses in the future, but hopefully the scientists of this world will research it and get on top of this and we'll be ready. Just like Bill Gates told us five years ago, we'll be ready to defeat the next, next virus outbreak. Hope you found this video useful and enjoyed the show.